Uh, who knows more about the Hebrews than the Hebrew of Hebrews? The Greek is totally different, but that could be accounted by Amanunasis, a different... Amanuensis. Amen, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah, writer of I, I, I think that he probably definitely had a different secretary because it's just a different style. Well, Romans had, Romans gives his name. What was his name? It does, yeah. I can't remember. T-E-R-T. -E I can't remember. Yeah. Tertullian? Well, it sounds like it, yeah, yeah, Tertullius. I was going to say Tertullian, but I thought, no, it's not him, he came later. Yeah, Tertullius, good, Rob, good. Yeah, Romans had the amanuensis. But he's not going to change, he's not going to say anything. I mean, the Holy Spirit is breathing that epistle. Right? Uh, it's a shame. See, Chris, Chris, Chris um, I, I thought we were on a little shaky ground. Luke, Luke was writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Luke wrote more of the New Testament than Paul did. You know that, right? If I didn't we put the Gospel of Luke and Acts together in, in volume. In volume. That adds up to, to more than all of the 13 of Paul's epistles. Oh, man. It's, uh, hey, it's 1041. Just thought I'd tell everybody. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, did you say that we're justified by faith? All right. Is the Holy Spirit the guarantee of our salvation? All right. Where in the Bible does it say we receive the Holy Spirit by faith? In Romans. Oh, uh, it says it in Romans that we receive it by faith. Receive it? Spirit? Yes. If we receive the Holy Spirit by faith, this is one of my points, then why don't you get it before baptism? Romans what? Uh, I'll, you'll have to give me a minute. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, Galatians. It might have been Galatians well, 2. I'll tell you just in a minute. It might have been Galatians 2, Chris. It's Galatians 2. 14. 3 14. It's Galatians 3 14. There's more than one spot I mean, in the New Testament, so. Yeah, that's okay, Mike. Because the promise to Abraham is the same promise. Is, yeah, Galatians, Galatians 3 2 and Galatians 3 14. He says you receive it by faith. But Paul said, but Peter said you receive it in your baptism. He said it promises unto you. Depends what promise he's talking about. Promises to you, your children, all who are far off. But that's my, that's my question to you guys is if there very clearly is faith. Good question, Mike. Good question. There very clearly is faith and then baptism. If it says you receive it by faith, that, the reason, that one verse is why the Roman Catholics say, well, your faith before baptism is incomplete. And I say they are more consistent than you because they have actually the Spirit coming at faith and at baptism. And they do that by saying your faith before baptism is an incomplete faith and baptism makes it complete. And so I say that is one of the inconsistencies of your position? I say that the Roman Catholic Church corrupted the original Jerusalem Church and uh, so it's no it's no uh, surprise to me that, that, that there's a similarity when it, because they're still going through the form. They've lost, they know what and how to do it but they forgot why to do it and so it doesn't surprise me that you know that you would think that we're Roman Catholics. No, I don't it's think just, you're Roman Catholics. The Roman Catholics acknowledge the Roman Catholics acknowledge the Church began on the day of Pentecost. You hold the same now, view of justification. That's you, the difference. No, no, no. We don't do that. Do you acknowledge <laughs> the Church began on the day of Pentecost, the Lord's Church? Define the called out ones. Yeah. Well, the called out. Jesus said, "Where two or three are gathered in my name." In Matthew 18, he said, "You know, if your brother offends you, go to that person. If he hears you, you gain your brother. If not, let him tell it to the leaders of the church. And if he doesn't hear them, let him be like the pagan." Okay. And then he it, went on to say, he you, went on to say that you know, where two or three are gathered in my name. So you got I, Matthew 18. You got Matthew 16. I Jesus would, said, "Upon this rock, I would I, say, the upon new, this rock, I build my church." I would, Peter, you know, the keys. Of the I would kingdom, make the gates this. of hell. I, I would make prevail. this. The, the new covenant church began at Pentecost. Yes, that's what I would say. I want to, I want to play Romans with you a little bit, and. Look at the three verses that mention baptism. Okay. <clears throat> you know, it only takes one verse. So in, in Romans 6, 
we just got done with his, his whole argument, as you spelled out for us with the, the outline. Which I don't feel like we had an objection against, although maybe an understanding. That's because we didn't go to the justification part. You didn't let me get past 324. Justification by faith, okay. We understand that, that that's the proof text that you're headed towards, right? I mean, a justification that is not by works, but is a justification by faith. Amen. So when we get to Romans 6, Paul's just finished going through lots of examples of why we are justified by faith. But then he says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And this is your like, lascivious and accusation. And I think even that has been misinterpreted because I wasn't applying it to you. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Now, things I want to mention is one. He puts his audience in this baptism. Two, he puts this baptism in fast tense. Three, he uses it as a, as a defense against those who would say, oh, Paul, you're preaching a faith that provides justification. Oh, let's just go sin and, and, and be lascivious, as we we're saying. But he says... In his arguments against such a thought, he says, don't you know that we who were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? How could we live any longer? Uh, we must walk in this newness of life. And so here, when he gets that accusation, which is the accusation of, Paul, you're saying we're justified by faith alone. I'm going to borrow your terminology. Let's just go sin so that grace may abound. Wait a second, guys. Don't you know that we that were buried with him through baptism were baptized into his death? My point here is not to um, take away the fact that we are, we are justified by faith. I have agreed that we are justified by faith. Paul, uh, John over there has agreed that we're justified by faith. It's, it's this understanding of baptism. My point here that I would like to, to see how you would rebuttal is by no means... Would he present this argument if he had placed baptism as a work of the flesh? That's not true. Because for this reason, his point for bringing up baptism is that it's a picture of being united with Christ. And, and he says that by five. He restates the very same thing. The Greek is almost parallel. We have been planted together. Five, verse five. Five. Verse we five. have been united with Christ. How about him. the planted. word planted? Planted. How about the word planted? Planted is better than united. Well, let's... Let's, um, and, and, and the uniting is the uniting in baptism, okay? In the plant. planting, the burial. Every f f plant that my father has not planted will be rooted up. Uh, Unless a seed of wheat goes into the ground and die, it remains alone. No, it, the Greek is against you. Sumfutoi. Yes, it's to be identified it's, with. It's in botany, it's a shoot. It's, it's, a, it's a shoot. It's to be identified with, it's against you. And I can show you right here if you want. The New American says united, but all the other versions go with the planet. We, we checked on it. I can... Why does it bother you to be, that baptism's a planet? Well, it, it, it doesn't. It's just that what is the best translation? That's what's bothering me. Because I want to be, I wanna be uh, faithful to what Paul was trying to say. He was using the thought of being united, not being planted. That You have, you have taken uh, your understanding of a Greek word, which... I would say is not based on the All right. study of the Greek word. Let me see if the argument even matters or hinges on this. So we've been united with him in our burial, in baptism. Okay? My point, again, is simply that he does not, he's not, he's not putting baptism into some kind of dead work. It's nothing to be achieved. I mean, baptism's not an achievement. And that's why I kept saying, you know, just somebody getting baptized doesn't save them. Simply baptism doesn't save them. Being the, the next leper after Naaman didn't remove leprosy. Being the next guy, I went, and I wrote this to you in the email, I went to the pool of Siloam and washed my eyes in it in hope that God would take away my nearsightedness. He didn't. <laughs> 
It didn't work. It didn't work. I washed in the Jordan River in hopes that something special would happen to me. The real one. And it didn't work. Because it wasn't in the work. It wasn't in the outward symbol. It wasn't in the baptism. Okay? I don't think Paul puts baptism in, in the category you're putting baptism in. Being united? Yeah, I think he does. I, I would oh, say... Oh, we're united with Christ in him, but I'm right. saying I don't put him in the... Bap I don't think he puts baptism into some work category. Uh, see, Hold this... On. Okay. Th this is what I would do. I would say if I was Paul, I would use the picture that Christ gave me to show this being in union with him. And it's baptism. And that's why those who were baptized into Moses, they were identified with him. There's no, there's no water or anything going on there except for the water that they're walking in between. It's being united with. They were united with Moses. They were identified with Moses. They were identified with Christ and his death and resurrection. There's no, there's, it's a picture of your union. He's pointing not to baptism, Jeff. That's your mistake. He's pointing Chris, to the union. Chris. That you have in Christ. Okay, and that's, that's what justification does. It unites you with Christ and his righteousness. Futos, I remember from my old uh, botany, when I took botany, it means a shoot. Futia is a planning, that which is planning, to bring forth, to spring up, to grow. Futon is a plant. The word here in Romans 6, 5 is sum futos. What do we do when we put the, with, put the uh, prefix sum? On, on the word futos. It's a shoot. With. So with. It's with. Yeah, with. With. It's like ergyro, sunagyro. It, it means to be planted or grown with. It right. Is, and it, it is a planning, uh, Chris. Not that our argument hinges on this. I, I, it, but see, if it's for, anything, me, for me, it's important it because is, the seed. The reception of the seed into the soil and a parable of the sower and but the Paul, sprout Paul is has synonymous that not with in the mind. biological. Paul the, has the new union birth, in the mind. seed. The seed, whether it's in the botanical sense or whether it's in the zoological sense, you, whether you, it's a spiritual sense, it's the same God of creation. Yeah. It's the same sowing of the seed. But whether we get a I, I plant or a baby what, <laughs> or a brand new church member, right. a Christian. And, and, and perhaps in the same way that um, you said the prefix is together, right? So we'll sin, soon. planted together, yeah. growing together. Planted on, soon planted on. I see Paul. Futia, futon, soon futos. In, in context. Gyro, soon a gyro, in race. context, however, in five, what he was just talking about, the point that we should not no longer sin is because we've been united to Christ. Amen. I don't have... Right, let me just go typologically it's to Revelation real quick. though, because Chris, of the... There's a funeral what, text here. What is it? Paul's justification is union. Where does Paul in that text put our unification to Christ? Where? When? Unification? In a, de in a death. In, in, and how do we participate? Our, our unification. Know you not, as many of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized... I mean, Paul puts that unity with Christ in the baptism. In the baptism, in the baptism but I'm asking and you. you want to make it just a picture. Yeah, yeah. You want to make it a picture? Yeah. No, well, no. I, what I want to do. And I, and I agree, it is, is a picture. Paul's yeah, pointing sure is. through the physical uh -huh. sign, he's uh -huh. pointing to the spiritual reality. Hey, Chris. That's what I see him doing, and that's why it's sermon? never a problem for me. Can I give you a funeral you sermon, Chris? Reality also. In the physical sign. That, that's the difference. No, Chris. no, I don't think. See, that's where you're adding to us. No, not at all. I'm not. No. John has been clear. You're the one that is very uh, wishy washy on that. John, I think, oh. is more solid. Oh. That's terrible. He, 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 he is more clear. In my error. John. I'm more consistent in my error. John, be clear to me. Hey, Chris, let, let, do you want a good funeral sermon? Baptism goes both ways, it, it takes you back to the cross. Because it's the death, burial, and it's the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ that backs that watery grave up. We see water; God sees blood. In Revelation 20, listen to this, verse 5 and 6. It says, uh, "Well, Revelation 26: Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power." What does that mean? What does that mean? Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. We got two resurrections. Yeah, the first, we got at least two yeah. resurrections. We got the, two the, deaths. The first resurrection 
is when we are given that resurrected spirit by the Holy Spirit. It's being born again. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm just getting excited about the rest of this passage in Romans because I think it just... Jeff, you know, Jeff, did you hear what you just said? Say that again. Uh, When's our first... He well, said our first resurrection is when we're is born when the, again. Is when yeah. we're born again when the Spirit... When the Spirit give, gives us a resurrected spirit. When the Spirit gives us a resurrected spirit, mm -hmm. but not in baptism. By uniting us to Christ. By uniting us to Christ, but not in baptism. Right, I, I understand Chris's doctrine is that they are born again before... It has nothing to do with water. Chris, when, you're di when you die, when we die, I hope it's not anytime soon, we're going to be put in a casket, unless you're cremated or something. We're going to be put in a casket. He's ground. Presbyterian. We're, they don't believe in chrism yeah, cremation. Praise the Lord. I don't either. I don't either. <laughs> There's no doctrine for us. We're gonna, our <laughs> casket's going to be put into the ground, is it not? I agree on that one. And, uh, and the Spirit is going to testify, you know, with our spirit that we're children of God. <laughs> The spirit is the down payment on the redemption of that of our body, mm. right? Not the redemption of our spirit and soul. Our spirit and soul have already been redeemed, amen. But the Holy Spirit is the guarantee or the down payment or the earnest that our body is going to be redeemed at the resurrection. So we're going to put that body in the ground someday. It's going to be a sad, sorrowful occasion, but we have hope. We're saved in hope. Mm -hmm. When the Lord comes back, what's going to happen to that body? You see what baptism does? Baptism ties us to the power of the cross because Christ is the first fruits. You know, Christ was resurrected from the dead first, then they who are his at his coming. And baptism also flashes forward to the resurrection of the dead. So I agree with Death, you. Death, burial, and resurrection. But we're in union on that. We can't be in union. We can't be in union, Chris. Okay. Because you're claiming, because you've actually nullified that watery grave of baptism. I the haven't. analogy breaks down. No, I. You're I claiming think... salvation in faith. And you don't, and faith will, as great as faith is, and we cannot please God, we're justified by it. We please God with it. We come to God with it, Hebrews. Uh, but faith cannot, faith cannot give us a death, burial, and resurrection, and faith cannot give us a washing. I see two ways of talking. You just said we're justified by it. But you told me our last meeting that justification comes at baptism. So, so what is it? Is it by faith or is it by faith and baptism? Mm -hmm. Okay, faith is required to come to the laver, and the laver is where we're justified. Well, Paul knew the Jews had no problem with baptism. He didn't have to say, like Jesus said, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. The stumbling block for the Jew was that he didn't believe. So when Paul says justified by faith, he's including, he's using that as a metonymy. Okay. He's using that as an all-encompassing okay. umbrella that they're going to embrace everything else because that's okay. the only stumbling block for the Jew is that he didn't believe. Gotcha. And, and he that says doesn't that. rule out all the other things that we're told that we must do in to be verse, saved. In verse 17 of chapter 6, he says, but God be thanked, because he goes through the argument again after talking about baptism, and he says, um, he asks the question again, should we go on sinning? Uh, where, does, where does he do that? The grace may abound. Romans 6, uh, 2. No, he, he goes at it one more time. Knowing that Christ be raised from the dead, dieth no man, uh, reckon yourselves out of the Let not sin, neither yield you members, for sin shall... What then? Verse 15, here we are. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? Here again, this under law and under grace thing, he, he didn't take the time to dismantle the picture of baptism. I'm going to call it picture for you. Okay. God forbid... Know ye not that to whom you yield your servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience, obedience unto righteousness. That's interesting. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. I'm sorry, Jeff. Could you read obedience unto? Righteousness. And you've obeyed the form that you have obeyed from the heart, that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you, being then made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. So I don't see, again, I don't see how Paul dismantles or throws baptism into this strange category of works. Nor do I see how um, you accuse the Church of Christ of affecting or making their own righteousness by obeying the command to be baptized. I think that when asked uh, all the simple questions, do you believe that you are justified by faith, you'll get a yes answer. 
when you ask, do you believe that it is only the blood of Jesus that washes away your sins, that in you is no righteous thing, you'll get a yes answer. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But faith is a monotony. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. And Faith Chris, is no monotony. And Chris, me. remember, Peter... It doesn't encompass baptism. Hey, Chris, and remember, there's several different Faith answers. has no work for you. Faith has no work for you. It does nothing. No ergon. It does nothing. It's the... There, it, or it's you, a mere belief. Or you would boast. No, it's not a mere belief. It's a, a, it's a belief. mere trust. A grip of belief. There's Paul a difference. Said, faith Paul is said, a mere trust for you. It's a yeah, mere trust. Yeah, it is. It is. That's it. it. Is. But that's not biblical faith. Faith is a persuasion. King Agrippa believed. Paul said, I know you believe the prophets. But I he know didn't you trust. Believe. He didn't trust. He said, almost you convince me. You yes. Be convinced. There's a difference. And, and this is why I think nature of faith. If, if, if we faith, were to go, if we were to go another session, I would love to. Okay. It, it would be the nature of faith versus okay. for me versus you, right. because I think that that's also another point. Although uh, you're right, the ergon is a huge point too. We were supposed to do baptism tonight. We'll come back and let you finish the Romans. We'll do all Romans. We'll come back. We'll do all Romans if you want. I would time, love to. When the I, time permits, I know. I was going to say I've been asked to prepare. I heard about it. I heard about yeah, it. we'll come so. back at the proper time. You know, there's different plans of salvation in Acts, depending on who you're talking to. When Let's you're see, talking yeah. to a Philippian jailer, when you're talking to a Philippian jailer, he said, you know, what shall we do, sirs? You know, what shall we do? Believe on the Lord with all your heart, and you'll be saved. See, that's a, that's a great answer. You can't tell that pagan, you know, Roman. You can't tell him to be baptized. He has no context whatsoever to put baptism in. So Paul had to preach the faith of Jesus Christ in Athens. He preached Jesus and the resurrection. But I'll guarantee you, when he got done explaining Christ and the resurrection, he baptized him into Christ. Yeah. On the day of Pentecost, uh, yeah, he's talking I... to a Jewish audience. They knew they had been to Sunday school all their life. And they <laughs> said, men and brother, what should we do? And they believed. He said, repent and be baptized. Same with the eunuch. See, we're talking to two different audiences. And Paul, when he's... Paul is going through this great Romans discourse. He's not ruling out baptism, justified by faith. But that's a metonymy. I could say law and grace. For me, old, new. Law came right, Moses, right. grace and truth. And, what about and, truth? And I see that. What about saved by hope? Saved I, by God's I, I mercy? I see that that's where saved you are. By, all right. I see that's where you are. You're having Paul juxtapose law of Moses versus law of Christ. And the law of Christ mm -hmm. is faith, meaning mm -hmm. believing and obeying. I'm open to the fact that, that, that he might, you made it a little wider than just Moses. I'm open to that. The law, the Gentiles had the law in their heart. God gave them that. The patriarchal age, I'm open to that. That doesn't. No, no, you can't be open to that. And let me tell you why. Because circumcision it, for the Jews were that very same act that baptism is for us. Wait a minute. It, See, it, that's it was that. Disagree. It's made without hand. Chris, it was never, that. Well, Chris, we you have, have to never grasped. We have to disagree. Chris, you, have, you, you, are calling, disagree. you are calling baptism a work, and you are invoking all the power and the strength of the Protestant Reformation. But let me tell you, that power and strength of the Protestant Reformation, what they define to be a work, is as strong as a toothpick here. The sign and seal of circumcision, its parallel is the Holy Spirit. That's what we believe. That's what the, the analogy teaches. breaks down. It is it, not a circumcision. You're never taught that the sign and seal of circumcision is baptism. You're, you're calling you're taught things to a sign work. It. It's an arbitrary definition. You're calling baptism a work by, in invoking the authority of the Protestant well, no, no, Reformation. No, no, no. I, let me tell you what I'm doing. I actually did not put it in the words exactly works. I went one step further to say where we could maybe agree on is it is a act of obedience where you go to become righteous. You tap works and you said anything you do. Well, you, well, said, yeah. you said baptism, quote, but, but, because it is that. You said baptism right, it because is, it is that. Right. And, and it, you it, said it, right. it is that. And you tap works. Mm -hmm. and, and I was tapping the works of Paul. Okay. What, what I'm saying, Paul's works is anything you do in order to become righteous. Righteous, and I, this isn't just you've your just own righteousness. Out, you've just thrown this out is half also the, righteousness. You've just Christ. thrown out half the New Testament. You really have, Chris. You've thrown out half the New Testament because because every no, I don't. every because sanctification. Paul, you get you get half some Christology and doctrine, and then you have application, practical things. What you have to put on, put off. What you have to do, live faithfully. But, all, but all the admonitions. What basis do you do that on? 
You do it because, not because you will be declared righteous if you do these things, but because you've already been declared righteous. I think you're beholden to Calvin and the Westminster Confession of Faith because total depravity equals total inability. And you're not allowed to save yourself, and we're all in agreement on that. None of us can save ourselves, but, but they went on to say you cannot prepare yourself thereunto. And that flies against the face of everything in the New Testament because Paul said in Acts 17 to those pagan Greeks, you're groping after God. You're blindly groping after him and feeling after him. And you know what? If you feel after him, you'll find him because he's not far from every one of us. Draw near unto God. Here's a part, James 4, 8. Draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hearts, you sinners. That's never been a problem. Purify. For us. Purify your hearts, you sinners. Now you tell me, is that a work? Can a sinner purify his heart? Uh, can Lazarus come being dead? I mean, it, it's the, when you preach, you're preaching for that miracle of resurrection to happen in those hearers. And you can command, the same way Jesus commanded Lazarus, you can command something and know that it's only by the Holy Spirit working in them that they mm -hmm. will do these things. And that's the seed. That's the seed. That's the word of truth. And, and we agree. Could Lazarus be, re could he receive the seed? And turn no, we around? don't agree because it's not a seed. It's a resurrection. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. You know, everything comes from God, Chris. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why you're hung up. All right. Well, no, Jesus it, came it, down. It is that. Jesus though. came down. It is that. No man because, ascends to the Father, the Son of Man now, descends. Now, wait a minute. Wait, that nips everything in the bud. No man ascends to the Father, the Son of Man descends. Everything's of God. Right. Everything's of God. Everything you receive is from everything. Heaven. Yes. Chris, it's, yeah. uh, you're a preacher. You're preaching. I'm asking a question. What mm. must I do to be saved? Believe. Okay. That's it. Just believe? I, I would say. That, Already believe. I, I would say that you... Already, that's why I'm here. Okay. I believe in Jesus. Uh, this, is, this is what I would say. I come to church this morning. I believe in God. There's a million uh, people sitting on the front row of church who believe there's a God and believe... That, that, that is right. Obedient. That is right. That they're not obedient. Obedient. I, I, I agree with you on that, but this is what I would say. That's what I want to know. I, I would say, say, let me define that belief for you. It's, How does the Bible define it? Not you I, define it. How does the Bible, does the Bible tell, tell me to be born again? That's what I want to know. Not what you and your... The, the, Bible, the, okay. the Bible tell me to be born again. The Bible says that you believe because you're born again. The born again makes you believe. What must I do to be saved? What you must do to be saved is you must empty all of your strivings. How do I do that? By trusting in Christ alone how? for your forgiveness. Okay. Is that what Peter said? I'm going by what, how I would preach Dude, that, from this, what, the yeah, harmony. Not what you have preach. What, according what to God's word. You, you believe this I would preach. the word of God. Yes, not yes. Taken away but I would, you believe that. But no, I, listen, you believe I would preach the same way Paul does. Right I would make all men guilty. He doesn't go, Paul, Paul doesn't have a one sentence gospel <laughs> because he wrote his own gospel fully he did not have someone record it and then tell this guy and then this guy writes it and then he just catches the elements of it but doesn't have the full context of everything that was said paul's full gospel is how i would preach where do you take me to i'm a filthy sinner chris romans 3 26. I jesus what do i do to be saved you must where do you take me to what scripture your guiltiness i take you first to I'm your guiltiness guilty. what do i do to be saved all right then i take you to christ and his work on the cross and the resurrection. And then I say, you must, in order to be united with Christ, you must trust in him alone for your salvation. If you're trusting in anything else, trusting in your ability to do anything or your, your, um, your need to do something to get that, then you have just missed it entirely. You need to trust alone in Jesus Christ. And then if you trust, display that by what Christ is doing in you by baptism. And that is a picture of what he has already done in your heart through the trust that you have. And I would say, okay. and I would say okay. that, yes. that the importance of baptism that you give to it is not in Paul's gospel. And he has an answer to that, and that, I like his answer. His answer is, look, Paul was not writing his gospel out fully. He was talking to a Jews who already knew what baptism is all about. So he didn't need to explain it. And, and I like that. And, that and, and then and that, that would make me. And James, who said your Abraham was justified by works, and every man is justified by works. And I, would, and I would go to John after he says that, and I would say, well, let's study that and see who Paul was okay. writing okay. to okay. in Romans. Time out. Let me, let me say, there's one thing that came through to Chris's answer to Tim. I think you said something to the effect that, and I might have got it in reverse here. 
You said that we believe because we've already been born again. Yes, and that is a big difference. Whereas in John. the Church of Christ, we, we believe that faith precedes the new Yes, birth. that's a big difference between me and him. Can we, at least we get an understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah a, that's a, a big difference. A problem yeah. uh, clearly defined as a problem half solved, right? We believe that faith precedes the new birth. He believes right. the new birth precedes faith. Yes, that's a big difference. Big difference. Uh, and I, I get that from John 3, and I get that from 1 John 5, 1, where it yeah, clearly states... But we don't get that from Mark 16, 16. No, And we, we don't, don't get that from Romans 10, 17. Rob, Romans Rob didn't have a chance tonight. Rob's Romans been over there. Romans 1 is the verse that says, Will you not, brethren... Or I speak to those who know the law. Yeah, but that's only in the context of what he's just talking about. And the context, it's not the whole letter. And, uh, amen. And the context of what he just got done talking about. You're doing a C-section on a woman who's not pregnant. What's that? The baptism. Romans 7, 1 is, is just concluding after Romans 6. He just got through the, we were buried with the <laughs> baptism. Romans 7, 1? The, the, in, six, in 6, 4, therefore... Uh, was raised up now, now wait a minute so we're we gonna quit here you walk in yeah. in Romans 7 1 is he is qualifying brothers for do you not know brothers I'm talking to you Jews right. that the law it's what he says uh, forward how do you know that brethren may not be the, the uh, it's Roman the Jews, church the, the next verse well sure with the Jews so when he says I'm speaking that know the law okay, okay. 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 yeah, yeah I'm sorry. it's what point, follows point here okay. is he says how that the law has dominion over man as long as he lives for the, and, and so he's pointing them back to Christ. Christ died, and in that Christ died, we're broken from that husbandry. We have a new marriage that we mm -hmm. need to have occur. Mm -hmm. that, near, that marriage is portrayed in the baptism he just got through with talking about. But he says, uh, but if the husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, this is verse 4, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead. This is all the same language we saw in Romans 6, 1 through 5. Uh, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve the newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. This is where Preacher D, my father, said Tuesday night when you were with us, Chris, he, he said this is a picture, this is just a, a baptism. This is a reference back to Romans 6, and this is where he called baptism the marriage. Newness Remember that? Spirit, verse 7-6. Uh, uh, I want to see here something here. It says yeah. newness, uh, is it pneuma? Newness of spirit, yeah, pneumathos. Okay, and going back to newness in verse, chapter 6, verse... Uh, four. Newness of life. Newness Is that Zoe? Life. No, no, no. What, I don't understand where you're going. My at. point is. Yeah, Zoe. It's, it's yeah, Zoe. Zoe. Newness of life. It's a new life. New, new uh, Zoe and a new. Uh, the spirit. new spirit and the new life come when we're planted with Christ in his death and resurrection. For you, from what I understand, and maybe you correct me if I'm wrong. We are planted in his death, or we're united in his death and resurrection at faith. Spiritually. And, and I don't see and and, that and faith is not dead. It's a living faith. It's a it's a trust. It's not just a believing demons, I believe. It, it's amen. a amen. trust. I understand that okay. you're not dealing with a Just so, face, because I you're know. right, brother, and, and this is a concern for me, and, I, I'm, and maybe this will help you, because I actually, when I preach the gospel, I actually stay away from believe. I actually say treasure Christ. And the reason I do that is to bring out the fact of what that faith is in distinction from that and so maybe me doing that having to use a different term treasuring Christ instead of just believing it's either because I'm because of all this and I'm wrong and that's your that's you showing that I'm wrong or it's because there has been such a perversion of this easy believism you know I just believe and I'm okay you know yeah. get out of hell free card yeah, a lot of people do yeah. That. And, and I hate that 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 hurts my soul well with all due respect 
you're, you want to be a preacher, and it says go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I'm sure that's something that you ain't going to be able to preach to every creature, but go to all the world. This takes me back to my question, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus where, says, where go to Mark 16, I'm in Mark 15 and 16. Okay. 16, 15 and 16. Jesus says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes, right here's your belief. You told me I needed to believe. He who believes will be saved. Is that what he says? Or does he say, he who believes and Jesus Christ, our Lord, who died for your sins and mine. Go into all the world, Chris, Tim, John, Jeff. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Acts 2.38 what must I do to be saved? What must I do? Repent and be baptized for the remission, for the forgiveness of sins. And you will receive the gift of the, and the receiving of the Holy Spirit. For this promise is not only to you, but to your children and all who are far off 2,000 years later when the gospel was being preached. So you're right. Paul did not come to baptize. He came to preach. Okay? Your mission may not be to baptize, but in response to your preaching, one must be baptized, believe, and be baptized to be saved. Saved from what? Hell. All right. And we can get let, into let any me... other thing, but you cannot ignore that. And my other question is this. Mm. I respect you. You're strongly, you know the Bible. You're strongly, uh, you have a strong foundation. My question is this, why, just as an outsider, I don't know you, as an outsider looking in, forget being a Presbyterian, Yeah, we're Christians, what is it with your hang up on baptism? When it clearly says, when it clearly says, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, and it clearly says, repent and be baptized and you will be saved, and it clearly says, we are buried with Christ. And baptism. Yeah. All right, let, let me answer that. You can answer that in Romans. You can't answer that to me because my mind. Okay. You can't answer that in one book of the Bible. I understand. And I, I, I'm it. not. And this is the important part for me is that what I, I have no problems with these scriptures. And I don't want you to hear me trying to brush them off. I'm not. This is, this is why I have a problem. It's not the scriptures. Because you're going to say this now, shut up. Because you're going to stand in front of the Holy God one day. Absolutely. And you're going to be standing in front of the Holy God. And you're going to give account for what you told people to do. Absolutely. To and this is and why. Any other thing than what Christ Jesus right. and Peter, who right. has the keys to the kingdom, says. And this is why. I believe you're in. You're in exactly. You're, you're, you're playing. With this God. is why it's a big issue. Jeff tried to. Like it was a little thing, it's a huge thing. And that's the reason for me. And the problem that I see is that in Acts 3, Peter does not say repent and be baptized. He said repent and be converted. You have to make that converted baptized. And then when Paul... For us, baptism is conversion. For Paul, it, <coughs> the word converted is what, though, in the Greek? All right. We won't go I mean, there right now. The same reverse argument. Turn into baptism is what then in the Greek? Immersion. Immersion. I mean, so why do you make the 319 cancel out 238? Well, it doesn't. Uh, let me keep speaking. Because when Paul gives his account of the gospel in Acts, I think, 19, he doesn't mention baptism. 319. It was a 319. No. 319. Acts 319. No, 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 that, that's Peter preaching it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm talking about Paul preaching his gospel so in Acts 19. Yeah, that's my question for you. Exactly. That, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to do a harmony. Well, here's my harmony. thing. You're, you're doing a harmony. Mm -hmm. But here... He it, takes a lesser. Yeah. In the Bible, in the Bible, in that word, in black and white, who did Christ give the keys to the kingdom of heaven? Who did he give them to? Now, no, now wait a minute. did he give them to? Uh, can you explain to me why that's... So important to you that because it was Peter. You're, you're dumping Peter 
clean over here on the side. And not you're, at all. You're ramrod and Paul. Paul, 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 Paul. Only because Peter did not write his gospel out in specifics. Who cares? Yeah. Who did Christ give the That's, keys to the Yeah, Yeah, turn it. It doesn't matter whether Paul wrote his own gospel or not. It does Who because we have Christ the specifics. Who did Christ give the keys to the kingdom? No, well, Peter did Now, say, this is important Peter because, is, listen, Peter well, wait a minute. Say, Paul's hard to understand. Let, let me say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, Peter's well, easier to understand. Paul's harder to understand. <laughs> That, that's a good one. But, but I, would like to, I would like to understand Paul. This is where I am, is that Paul has given the specifics. Peter gives the general. And so where are we going to go to understand the general statement? We're going to go to the specific. That's why I keep going back to Romans, because it is clearer. It's okay, put out you're in Romans, specific You're saying Romans is clearer through Paul. My question again to you is you haven't answered. Who did Christ give the keys to the kingdom of heaven? Yeah. Who, the had the, who had the okay, keys? Okay, that's a legitimate question. Heaven? Yeah, right. that's a legitimate yeah. question. And you know what? The church was founded uh, with Peter. Paul came exactly. after. Paul, Paul was 10 years after. after. Yeah. And that's my Peter question for you. How can you deny Peter? I'm not denying Peter. Yes, you are. If I keep going back to The church Paul, didn't back begin at Rome. The church no, I'm not. Begin at Rome. It I'm began trying in Jerusalem. to understand the gospel. And if I had two men, who cares what keys they have? If I had right there, right there. you just threw you just threw everything out there. You who cares who has what keys? Two Christ inspired men. Gave, no, 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 no. Christ gave the keys to heaven to Peter. And you just said who cares who has the keys? Wait a minute. This is where just No, no, you just blew yourself out of the water, right? No, now. I didn't. I, yes, you're you did. not understanding me. Listen to me. Okay, I'm this is what I'm saying. You're making no sense. One inspired man, another inspired man, both equal. No. Well, uh, no, they're not equal. Oh, you're throwing yourself no, they're, in the they're water equal. by saying they're not equal. They're equal, but one You're throwing they're yourself equal. in the water. No, they're, equal. they're equal. Oh, now they're equal? Yeah. yeah. They, now, they, wait a minute. To the point, they're, they're equal. As yeah, in, Paul's as not a wet behind You were making one unequal. Who has the keys? Wait, wait, wait. Paul said, I'm not behind, one went behind the chiefest of the apostles. They're equal. Yeah. But one came exactly. first. But one came first. Exactly. One came first. Jesus yeah, did. I, I wanted to. Uh, yeah, he's the I think he said something in Acts, like Paul preached a different, he didn't include baptism in his preaching, or what did you say? When he's explaining the gospel in Acts 19. Acts 19? We, we'll have to go there. I mean, if yeah, you want to look at it. I brought that up a long time ago, yeah. But, when he does, it's where he goes into the whole history of Israel and uh, Paul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Acts nineteen is uh, he's in Ephesus. Uh, Acts nineteen, he, he asks them unto what then were you baptized? This is Paul. Then they said John's baptism. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with baptism of repentance, saying that the people that they should believe on him which should come after him that is in Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hold on, let me find it, Jeff, before we start. So that's Paul preaching that. Uh, I'm not sure on the chapter. Let me You're you're talking there. about when he addressed the crowd. Uh, it is Paul preaching there though. And they ended up getting baptized again. I, I don't have the problem with baptism. The problem I have is sure, when Paul uh, preaches his gospel. It's not the centrality of baptism's not there, just like it's not in Romans. That's that's my whole point. Well, Philip didn't have baptism as his centrality either. He just preached Jesus. He just preached unto that Ethiopian Jesus. Baptism centrality, and I don't yeah. think it's the centrality of our preaching. Yeah, no, it the isn't. Centrality is the, the only time we talk about baptism, Chris, is when we're with you. That's <laughs> that's what, why did the Ethiopian bring up baptism? We just do it, but we don't talk about it except with you. Where are you at? Where are you? I'm trying to, is it before King Agrippa? Well, he, account, he recounts his conversion. Uh, he recounts his conversion. He, he did it three times. He did it three times. He does the preaching Acts 19. He baptizes the people. How about in 18 where Paul was compelled by the Spirit to testify to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ? Okay, and then it goes when he preached on them and said, Then Christmas and eight, Christmas the Lord was sent, I believe, on the Lord with all his household and many of the Corinthians. And and we're now, how about 22? How about Acts 22? Mm -hmm. Paul, when he when he spoke to them in the Hebrew tongue, remember when they uh, they were going to lynch him? And he, okay, now well, well, wait a minute. Him? I found it. It's okay. it's 26. Okay. It, it's where Paul tells of his no conversion. So he recounted it three times. There was no such thing as an unbaptized believer in the New Covenant. 
Church. What, what, but there was in the Old Testament? Is there two salvations, one for Abraham, one for you? Christ nailed the old covenant to the cross. We're under was it Christ's righteousness yes. that saved him? I would say yes. There's two that, That's what my ask is. Okay. Uh, the old and the new. I, I, the old and the new. Okay. As the unbaptized just, just realize that's where, yeah, Acts 26. Listen to what Paul says. All right. He's talking about his conversion. And he says about his, uh, his calling to preach the gospel. And he says, he, uh, I'm, I'm, I'll read it to you, 19. Therefore, there, uh, no, 26, verse 19. Therefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision that was to preach the gospel, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem, and throughout all the region of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God. There's repent and conversion. Performing deeds in keeping with their repentance. Performing deeds, that's the same works that Paul says is antithetical to his gospel. Performing works in keeping with the repentance. There, Paul makes baptism. Is that communion? Works. Are you sure? Now, isn't it funny? I have the totally different point of view. Yeah. I think he's invoking the James works of Christian righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. I think that we should repent and turn to God, be converted, Acts 3.19, or repent and be baptized, and okay. do works that are fitting with the repentance it, it, of, a, of, a, of a man of God. Is that, is worthy of, should, should, curious, we're showing our faith by our works. This is how I define baptism, though. Performing deeds. John uses when he, he, he tells their, All right, I'll have to look that up. Says, show works meet for repentance before you Fruits. No, Carpos. Okay. Carpos. Yeah. Is it the same word That's in me? Matthew 3. I'll, I'll look quick. Meat for repentance is it the same word? Meat? I think it's fruits. Right. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Bless, brother. Let's pray real quick. I'm leaving. Cross dear, all right. I'm dear sorry. Father, yeah. uh, so dear Father, uh, Tim, have a word of prayer real quick. So, right. And then uh, we'll just stay as late as we can. Go ahead, Tim. Have a word. Go ahead. Uh, Father God, we're just so grateful and honored to work we can come together at John's house tonight, Lord, and study and, and hear your words, Lord. And Lord, we get uh, fired up sometimes when uh, when there's when there's a busy war. It just it just seems so clear to me, God, uh, and I'm sure it seems so clear to Chris. God, it just seems so clear your word when when it says uh, in Mark 16, 16. In Acts 2, 38, it's just so clear, God, that I don't see how we, we can dance around it and, and get sidetracked, Lord, but uh, I know that the devil's the author of confusion, God, and uh, sometimes that we get wrapped up in doctor, doctrination and denominations and uh, teachings of this one and that one, Lord, I stick to your word and your word alone, and Father God, I just thank you for that word, for it is the power of Christ to save and I thank you for all these men here, God. And I pray that you would continue to bless each and one of us and continue, Lord, to help us to grow in our understanding and of your word and knowledge, Lord, and just help us to go out and, Lord, and share our faith and share the gospel. But, Lord, when it comes to the, to the part where they say, what must we do to be saved? Lord, if we stray from any other thing than what you said and what happened on the very first day when the very first message gospel message was ever preached. If we stray from any other thing than what, than what Peter said when he was just filled with the Holy Spirit, God, and was under such an awesome and mighty power, then Lord God help us. God help us. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for these men. In Jesus' precious and glorious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, Jeff, I want you to come see this. No, I no, 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 this is, um, this is, okay, the, the, the Erga Pazantas is Carpos. the exact phrase used in, um, it's in 1 Peter, 1 Peter, uh, hold on, hold on, uh, if Paul was talking, 2 Peter 1, 5, it's the same word, Carpos, don't be honest, it's like, all right, hold on, Universal. What I want to know is about the, he says, do works meet for it. Yeah, what bring fruits, fruits meet, yeah. Yeah, he used that expression. Pazantes. Yes, it's in Romans. That, that's what I'm so excited about. Metanoia. Uh, hold on, I got it here. You just got to give me a minute, all right? Produce, therefore, fruit worthy of repentance. Produce that fruit. Yeah, that's a good, produce the fruit. Produce fruit worthy of repentance. Well, anybody who's... 
I got it. Just give me a minute. All right. Uh, all right. Let me use my program here and I'll find it. <laughs> Where is that verse in John? Uh, John? Well, it's Matthew 3, 9. It's Matthew 3. Yeah, the axe is laid to the foot of the tree of Judaism. Now, Acts 26, we still got to put that together with Acts 22, Chris, the uh, recounting of that. Uh, let, me, let me find, make this connection first. I think this is actually really important for you, know, for me, for you to understand my position. Just for you to understand you know, my position. Acts 3, 19. Okay. It, he uses it in, in conjunction with works in his argument making all guilty in Romans 2. See you guys. Good night. See you, Eutychus. See you, buddy. See you, Eutychus. Eutychus. You know who Eutychus was, right? <laughs> You're, you're he right. fell asleep at midnight, and he when Paul wanted to preach all night. You just fell asleep in that window. Yeah. Well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Drive careful. That's what he's got for us. Well, hey. <laughs> now, I, I suppose there should be a conclusion to every good thing. But okay. Go ahead, it's Romans 9:11. That is where he uses the ergos pro, whatever. The uh, prasantas. It, it's the exact same phrase that he uses in his testimony about repentance. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of men. Oh, yeah, thank you. Good night, Robbie. Well, Israel was elected for a purpose. The problem is they put their they put their pride and boasted in their election and not in their faithfulness, mm. not in their obedience. You know what we're talking about? That Esau. Why did God hate Esau so much? He despised his birthright. It's it's they it's they done nothing. It's the Romans nine. It's the done. They they have proso nothing. They've done nothing good or bad. Romans nine what? Uh, eleven. Nine eleven. Though they were not yet born and had done nothing, done nothing, prosto nothing, either good or bad. Can we use that? In it's our, the same. Can we it's use the same that in word. our uh, total depravity debate? Can we use that in our total depravity debate? And children having not been yet born, neither having done any good or evil. Let's see. You didn't get my joke. Yeah, that's okay. No, I didn't. <laughs> Sorry. Can, we, can I use that for my uh, children aren't born in sin argu argument? You, you oh, like oh, that one there? Yeah. I, I'm, my, my mind's somewhere oh, I'm sorry. else. I'm sorry. Let's try, to wind, the, 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 Let's try to wind it down here. It's 1130. Okay. The, the Erga Presantas in uh, Acts 26, my whole point is, is that he, that is how I define baptism. Yeah, I and that's what hangs me up. I know it is. Okay? No because question. for me, I see that, I see that's what Paul's talking about. The works that is meat unto repentance is the obedience of baptism. Wow. And what do you say it is again? There, there's, there's no wonder we can't get together. So, so what, what is it for you? When Paul says that, what do you hear him saying? In Acts 26. In 26... <laughs> I see him referring to the works, the James works that, that we demonstrate our Christian faith. And even my Thompson chain puts over here good works. Even my Thompson, even my William Thompson chain reference takes that to be good works. And what's the first act of faith? The first act of faith is baptism, is it not? The first act of faith. Well, I, you know, I try to frame baptism from the scriptures. I think you're making a deduction, Chris. I'm not, because you're saying that Paul needs to have me, baptism in his gospel, and I'm asking you, where is it in 26? Now, what's that? Paul needs to have baptism in his gospel to be congruent with Peter. Where is it in 26? That's what I'm asking you. He says he's preaching it, and he defines it here by repentance, by turning, and he defines it by this repentance. It, they should 
repent and turn to God, performing deeds in keeping with their repentance. So what, what is that deeds except as a baptism? Well, me, or he me. has a gospel without baptism. That's what I'm going all right, at. All right, we, learned, we looked at that word turn to God. We looked it up. Convert. And that's what convert is. And, we, and what was the Greek word? Hepas. Strops. I, I'm sorry, Hepis, I don't know it. Yeah. Hepas strops. Uh, I don't know it by heart. Yeah. Let's see if it's the same word, Chris. Let's see if it's the same well, word. No, it is. absolutely it is. It's the same hmm? word. It's the same word as Acts 3. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, here it is right here. How do you pronounce that word? Hepastrapsate. Oh. Okay. Hepastrapsate. Is, yeah. is that close? Yes. All right. And then in Acts 26... And that means to be converted, right? Yes. And in the Old Testament, Jeff said, and you said that the Old Testament equivalent would be to turn. To turn, yeah. All right, so it puts you in a, so Towards so, God, though. I mean, that's the whole point. All right, so we got, we, and let's look it up here in, 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 in Acts 26, verse 20. Like there, we got, we got, uh, we got, uh, yeah, it's the same expression, Jeff. Oh, absolutely. I, I Metanoia. Knew, I know it was. And yeah. uh, Hepastrapsin. Repent and turn, repent and be converted, repent and be converted, repent and be baptized. Now, if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, why isn't baptism synonymous with conversion? Repent and be baptized, repent and be converted. A has to equal C at that point. I would your have. baptism is your conversion. But show me in Scripture Paul probably where, got, where they are... He probably got tired of using, this, like our English teacher, tired of using the same thing over and over, so... So, so, you know what? Stylistic variation, yeah. Well, uh, you know, it says many priests obeyed the gospel. Many priests were added. You know, he's not going to sit there and repeat the whole formula over, yeah, actually, right. over and over and over. All he has to say is many, many priests obeyed. Many were added unto them. And he already told you how you get added. How do we get added to the church? The, the conversion, you, though, no, nowhere in, in Scripture is it equated with baptism. Now what? The conversion... Paul, Paul uses that term, and we could do a word study on it. Well, look, look, it's look. nowhere equated well, why with don't, Why don't you go baptism. to Acts 20? You left out the recounting of his conversion from Acts 22. Why don't you look at Acts 22, 16? 22, 16, where he recounts his... You ought to know that off the top of your head. You 22, know, 16? Yeah, you ought to Sorry. know that. Chris, I want you to... There's eight baptism texts. I want you to memorize them. <laughs> So that you'll be able to debate Campbellites a little more effectively. A little more effectively. Okay? All right. I'm not putting you down. I know. But you should know Acts okay. 23. There are certain scriptures we should have memorized. I had to memorize all those Romans. Romans 3.23. For all sinners come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23. I had to memorize the Roman road. The wages of sin is death, but to get to God's eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. I had to memorize the Roman road. Why can't you memorize the baptism scriptures? What is what, See, this is the problem. What is Acts 22, 16? The, the, these are all of the scriptures in the New Testament which have Repent conversion. conversion. I mean, just look at this. They, they um, turning to the body, Acts 9, 40. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number who believed turned to the Lord, Acts 11, 21. Perfect. All right, well, let's see where... That's an action, isn't it? We're, let's see, we're baptized. That, that be, be be they were being baptized. Absolutely not. That's what I'm trying to say is that they're, they're turning. But, but read Acts 22, 16. I, I understand this. No, I don't think it's a valid uh, argument. 11, 21, I think absolutely it is because you're putting a significance on the word that's nowhere in Acts, let alone the rest of Scripture. You can't, you can't that do that. Your proof that baptism is not conversion is your assumption that baptism is not conversion. No, I'm looking at the Greek word and how Luke uses it. Yeah. He doesn't use it for baptism. And, and look how much he uses it. He uses it a lot. And it's never. Then we have a contradiction in the plan of salvation. No, you don't. Because you, you know can what? harmonize them another way. Peter was That's what I'm trying to probably say. Probably it was the next day or the next week between Acts 2 and 3. There's not a real timeline between Acts 2 and <laughs> What is Acts 22? You harmonize down and, and he harmonizes up. Okay, and you guys can take opposite prepositions if you prefer. But in Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized. You receive the Holy Spirit. And Acts 3.19, yeah. repent and be converted. Yeah, four. Hey, wait, wait, for the, for the forgiving of your sins, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Now, what's that talking about? So what's, is that on a reference to the Holy Spirit, that times of refreshing will come from the presence? How do we get the Lord's baptism. presence? To harmonize conversion, Chris eliminates baptism and puts it as a work after justification. Mm -hmm. To harmonize scripture, the Church of Christ puts baptism right into conversion. 
I, I see that, and I, I see that. I see that that's what is going on. And she, as many scriptures there say that we, well, I mean, we get into the definition of what is justification. Justification is proven of sin. And, the, and, and, and that's why the, the argument is just there. Just so you right, never sin that one. We're not, there's no debate on justification. Yes, there is a huge no, it's one. When. It's not it's how. It's not how we're justified. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. For you, we must be baptized to be justified. That is a how. You're making that. You're forcing that in. No, that's a how. You're forcing that in there. How am I forcing that in there? You have to be baptized. How? How to be baptized? Because in order for you to, in order for you to, to uh, justify Paul, you've got to rob Peter to pay Paul. No. I mean, we're just letting the baptism scriptures speak. We're just letting them say what they say and do what they say. And I'm just harmonizing. It doesn't scripture. say we're justified in baptism. So I'm not going to say you're justified in baptism. But it says baptism now saves you. Not the putting off of the filth of the... Not the What's physical baptism. What's up with that? That's physical baptism. No, it's not. No. And he's saying it's not physical baptism. Exactly. And you're saying it is physical baptism. No. He says not the putting off of the filth of the flesh. Right. Not. It's not the physical. That's what I'm trying to say. It's in the heart. Exactly. So, and I'm going to separate that just like Peter did in First no, Peter three twenty one. I can't believe I've never heard of this before. I mean, it's so <laughs> that's how they that's how they deal with that verse. If baptism is not the literal putting off, that's how Menno Simon's dealt with it. By the way, I was looking at it. If baptism is not a literal taking a bath, then what is it? And how does it now save us? Baptism now saves us, not. The physical thing, but the spiritual thing. So what is so what is this? What's going on? He makes a distinction between the physical and the spiritual there, which you won't allow. But not physical. It's not physical baptism. Me, it's spiritual I, baptism. As a spiritual water, the the not the cleansing of the body. He's referring back to the Jewish practice of, of baptism and saying we're not cleansing. We're not going through some ceremony. So he's saying it's not Jewish baptism. It's Christian baptism. It's not bathing. It's, it's not, not bathing. bathing. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Check this one out. I mean, I don't think this one will. Build the argument or, or dismiss the argument. But it's not a good verse for, for arguing the way your way is what I'm saying. It's just It is because that bathing is used as a synonym for what is done in baptism, whether it be spiritual or in your case it would be physical, but for me it would be spiritual. It's called a wash, a bathing. Right, but he's saying it's not a bathing. You're not getting back. What's going on? Exactly. It's not not, it, he's saying it's not a bathing, the removal of the filth of the flesh. When Jesus washed Peter's feet, unless I wash you, well, you, don't you, you don't even belong. You have no part. Well, if that's the case, then wash all of me. Yeah. No, no, this is not about washing. Right, 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 right. Not only that, Jeff, he says, you don't even understand what I'm doing right now. Yeah. You don't even understand what I'm doing right now. But later, you will understand. And that's when I want you to feed. The and brother. that's that's what we teach in regards yeah. to First Peter three twenty one. If it is, uh, it might be yeah. twenty and twenty one. Yes. The same as the foot washing of Peter. It, the same, same kind of language. The same kind of language. Uh, but he said. You got it. But he said yeah. only. You're making a big mistake. I don't think so because I think you're using the that totally words, wrong. The Greek words for clean and unclean in there are, are car the same ones. That, it's not the words that come out of the man that make money. You know what? You've got an aversion to water, Chris. You got an aversion to water, and you know what? As you communicating bad, forgiveness of sins, you got yes, some you're bad right. Company. You got some bad company oh, when it comes. Yeah. That's not good. I what, know where you're going with this one. You got some bad company because okay. you know there's some other people in the Bible. There's some other beings in the Bible that have an aversion to water, and they like to stay in the dry places. Oh, I, I like baptism, just not saying that in physical baptism is my you forgiveness of sin. Say it. All right, yeah. let, me, let me play a little semantics here. Let him look at it. Let him look at it, Jeff. I don't think he's ever looked at it before, have you? I have, and he, that's what I'm it. saying, is that he says... Oh, are we going to take a break? No, we got it. We don't want you. We are on fire, so we're just going to do it as you're... All right, go ahead. Go ahead. See, I, I, I've never heard...